Okay, now we're going to demonstrate how we record business transactions using the journal and then how we classify them and summarize them by posting them to the ledger. First of all, the journal. Riviera Theatre was recently formed. All facilities were completed by March 31st. On April 1st, the ledger showed the following balance. It's cash, 6300 land, 10000 and so on. The first thing we must do is enter them in the T accounts. Now, I have done that for you. Now, secondly, it says, journalize the April transaction, including explanations. And we start with April 2nd. Paid film rental fee of 800 on the first movie. So, April 2nd, debit, rent expense. Now, notice the debit is very close to the line here. $800, because rent expense went up, and expenses increased on the debit side. And I paid cash, so my cash went down, so I credit cash 800 Cash is an asset, and it decreases on the credit side. April 3rd, ordered two additional films at $750 each. Now keep in mind we're recording business transactions here. Transaction is an exchange. On April 3rd, no exchange has taken place. This simply ordered two additional films. We haven't received them. We haven't paid for them. Um, so this is not a transaction. So we move on. April 9th, received 4700 cash from admissions. Now, we are a theater, and that's how we earn our revenue. And so, therefore, on April 9th, we earned revenue. And the way we would record that, the date, the debit first, the debit's always given first, debit cash, 4700 because I received that in admissions, and credit my revenue account, in this case it's called service revenue, 4700 Okay, now, April 10th, I paid 2000 of the mortgage payable and 1200 of accounts payable. I paid cash. So this transaction affects three accounts. The three accounts are mortgage payable and accounts payable and cash. Now mortgage payable went down 2000 so a decrease in the liability is a debit. So I debit mortgage payable 2000 Accounts payable went down because I paid it off by 1200 And a decrease in the accounts payable account is a debit. And the credit is cash. Now, I forgot I should be making explanations here, but what we could say is paid, paid down mortgage, and accounts payable. And accounts payable. Okay. Now, on the 11th, I hired Mr. Gavin to operate the concession stand. Gavin agrees to pay the theater 17% of gross receipts payable monthly. But here again, like April 3rd, this is not a transaction. I just hired somebody. They haven't worked for me. I don't owe them any money. We just have an agreement. And in accounting, we only record business transactions. So this was not needed to be recorded. So we move on to April 12th. Paid advertising expenses for 10. Expenses are always debited. So I debit advertise and expense for 10. And I paid cash. So my cash wins now. So I credit for 10. And I would just say, as an explanation, paid for advertising bill, I guess. We can just say paid advertising bill. All right. Now, on April 20th, I received one of the films ordered on April 3rd and was billed 750 The film will be shown in April. Now, this is a transaction. I received it, and I now, I was billed, so therefore I owe it. The journal entry then is debit rent expense, always debit expenses, 750 and I haven't paid it. I owe them because I have an account with them. So I credit accounts payable, seven fifty. On the twenty fifth of April, I received three thousand cash from customers for admissions, same as the one we did above. 
Journal entries begin to repeat themselves because the same transaction repeats itself. So April 25th, I received cash, so debit cash, and I earned revenue. And every time you earn revenue, you credit service revenue. And the explanation is received cash for admissions. On April 29th, I paid 2000 No, I'm sorry. On April 29th, I paid salaries of 1900 So it's debit salaries expense one thousand nine hundred and I paid it so it's credit to cash one thousand nine hundred and I just have to say paid salaries of course I paid salaries in cash okay and the last one, I re no, the second last one, I received statement from M. Garva allowing gro uh, showing the gross receipts of 2000 and a balance due of 340 for April. He had gross receipts and he owes us 340 He's going to pay half now and remit the mess. Okay, now on this one, um, we received cash. Uh, we received 130, so ca 170, so cash goes up 170. He's going to owe us the balance, which is 170, so debit accounts receivable 170. Now this is revenue, but it's not admissions revenue; it's concessions revenue. So instead of using the account service revenue, where we provide service, this is revenue we've earned as a commission on sales. So we're using an account called sales revenue. We can have two revenue accounts. And that sales revenue account is 17% times the 2000 or $340. And the final transaction then is I prepaid 1200 rental on a special film that will be run next month in May. So now we prepay for a movie. We haven't received the movie yet, we're not going to get it. But we prepaid for it. So that is an asset. And we call that prepaid rent. And because it's an asset, it increases on the debit side. And I paid cash, so it increases on the credit side. So there you have a number of transactions for a theater company. And we demonstrated how we use the general journal. Notice that debits are always done first and recorded next to the line. Then we indent and record the credits. Notice every journal entry, the debits equal the credits. And that's how we do that. Now, in the next video, I am going to demonstrate how we transfer the data from the journal to the ledger. And that will be the next um, concept video.